The Muslim tribesmen of northern Nigeria gather in their thousands to welcome their Christian queen to Kaduna, the northern capital. From every part of their quarter of a million square miles of territory they have come to greet her. On horseback, by train, on foot, by canoe. Some have been traveling for weeks from the shores of Lake Chad, from the banks of the Niger, from the fringes of the Sahara Desert. Down the long lane of tribal warriors, the queen and her husband drive to the Durbar ground to witness a ceremony which was already old when the Tudors ruled in Britain. As the royal car moves forward, the horsemen close in to form a steadily growing cavalcade. Near the royal dais are the chiefs with their retinues, leaders of many different tribes with a bewildering variety of traditions and cultures. For though this is the most primitive part of Nigeria, it is by far the most colorful and diverse. A proud people, slightly contemptuous of the southerners with their cities and their newfangled ways. An ancient people who know how to welcome a queen. Her Majesty's car enters the arena. Every yard of the way, she passes strange costumes, exotic headgear, and some very surprising ceremonial equipment. The queen is in evening dress, a break from the normal procedure of British royalty. This is a gesture to the feudal splendor of the occasion, for never before has she worn her full evening regalia at an outdoor event. From every tribe in the 12 provinces of northern Nigeria they have come. Plateau, Kaba, Benue, Ilorin, Niger, Zaria, Katsina, Adamawa, Bauchi, Kano, Bornu, Sokotu. Tribes famous for their fighting men, heirs to the Hausa warriors and to the Fulani, that conquering race of horsemen who swept down from the north in centuries past. the tribal contingents pass in review. As they approach, they raise their right fists in the Hausa salute, the sign of allegiance. Each contingent has its own dancers striving to outshine the others. It's a strange paradox that these northern tribes, so proudly independent, are for that very reason cautious about accepting self-government too hastily. They fear that it may mean domination by the more sophisticated South, and some of their feudal chiefs see in the spread of new ideas a threat to their nearby.